We are here at the uh, meeting, the first and uh, only meeting of the Scientific Program Committee of the Next Einstein Forum. And I'm joined here by one of our distinguished Scientific Committee members, Dr. Klaus Topfer from Germany. Welcome, Dr. Topfer. Thank you very much. Happy so, to be here. Yes. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with NF. No, first and foremost, I have to underline that I'm a very old man, so I have a long <laughs> vita and I don't want to touch everything, but um, I served quite a long time in the German government as a minister for the environment, minister for housing, and then I was asked by Kofi Annan, the Secretary General of the United Nations, to be responsible for the environment policy of the UN. Mm. So I accepted this and headquarters of the United Nations Environment Programme is actually Nairobi in Kenya. So I spent eight years of my life in the last decade in uh, Africa. It was a good lesson to learn. And I, by training I'm an economist and I'm a sociologist. And I learned a lot uh, of the wisdom and the needs of this continent of Africa. Very impressive. Thank you. So uh, now uh, we are talking about uh, the next Einstein Forum that uh, seeks to convene uh, po uh, policy makers, scientists and civil society to talk about Africa and science. And science seems to be uh, a topic that is put forth that it's an ingredient for development. Your experience from Germany, both in government and through the, uh, the UN at the, at the international mm -hmm. policy level, how, when you look at the world and the, how different regions of the world have developed, where do you position science as an ingredient or not an ingredient of that difference of the different developments of parts of the world? You see, first and foremost, I'm extremely happy that I can serve to an Einstein Forum. Sure. I was asked to develop a new institute in Germany, exactly headquartered in the city of Potsdam, next to Berlin, exactly the city where Einstein lived and worked, oh, and where he made this contribution to the scientific knowledge in the world. And what we learned there as well is that there will be no development without scientific results. It is easy to, unex uh, to explain. Give me a concrete example. If you want to have economic development, you need energy. There is no uh, economic development without energy. Where is the energy coming from? Africa, mainly, is until now quite an energy poor continent. Why? It's not invested, it's not the new technology available. To make energy services available for Africans give a boost in economic investment and give of course a feedback to better structure for the science. We need science structure in Africa, not to ask for the transfer of technology from abroad to Africa, but to develop scientific solutions in Africa for the needs of this continent. And I believe, therefore, um, for all the perspectives we see, it is really the key contribution make Africa a global player in the development of science. There are lots of talents here. It is a young population. You see, in Germany, we have a decreasing population. In Africa, you have a young, increasing population. The perspective to go to 9 billion people is linked with that. How can you solve the problem without new scientific findings? This gives Africa a real need for leapfrogging its development with regard to science and technology. And I'm fairly sure that this can and will happen in the very moment where the understanding in the world is also beyond the old colonialism thinking we bring to them and then benefit. No, that's not the correct way. The Africans know what is necessary for them, give them the chance and give them the confidence that this can be done Lots of young people are excellent scientists already now, and I believe that is the future of this young continent. So, um, if I get you right, you're saying that uh, for any kind of economic transformation or development to improve the quality of life for, uh, for any society, they need 
the, the resources, the ingredients of development, economic development. So you need energy. You should train lots of advanced engineers to develop your energy, energy sector. One thing that touches, uh, sort of, uh, uh, comes up uh, recently is this uh, Ebola crisis that, that, that uh, you touched very well on what you're saying. Some of us have argued that the Ebola crisis was a crisis only because there was an absence of medical and scientific infrastructure to address the problem. Because in the U.S., for example, where I am, the flu alone kills about 40,000 a year. But it's not a pandemic. It doesn't destroy the whole society, the economic base. But in Africa, because of the lack of scientific infrastructure and manpower, and this small perturbation in the system ripples up because of, uh, of, of, of that absence. So it makes sense. Now, given your experience in Africa, what would you say is, has, is the biggest impediment to African scientific advancement? And uh, what would you think could help overcome those impediments? I think the, to underline first and foremost that this is really the challenge. Yes, we see, we see it again and again that those problems concentrated, for example, in Africa, doesn't have enough investment for scientific developments to bring solutions for those problems. Ebola is a very, very sad example for this. Nobody developed pharmaceutical against Ebola. Not really, because it was not a problem of the rich people in other places who can pay for this medicine. And therefore, it is necessary that we do it in this continent with the knowledge from around the world, but developing your own basis here. I think that is the main perspective in my eyes also for the next Einstein Forum, to give a clear signal that this is the perspective, bringing all the people behind a development that makes African science a congenious player on the global scientific agenda. And that is not a one-day shot. That is a lot of investment, a long-term possibility. Uh, the topic of Ebola brought us again and again to this. We can have the same to malaria. The development of medicine against malaria is lagging behind. We are developing in developed countries medicine, pharmaceuticals, for diseases not yet discovered. Uh, the United States of America has a share of 5-6% of the global population, but the consumption of 45% of the global pharmaceutical consumption. This is a totally unbalanced system. And then we cannot be surprised that in such a drastic situation as Ebola, no infrastructure, no public health system, no medicine, no infrastructural preconditions with regard to protection of hospitals, of doctors, and that gives the same what could be handled easily in other countries, nearly a pandemic consequences, destabilizing the whole society of three important African nations. And therefore, this next Einstein Forum is not just for the sake of science. Yes, it is. But it's also for the sake of refocusing our attention in Africa on the work of science and the contribution of African people.